The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Thursday, August 25th, and this is the morning star drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So, what is happening on this wonderful Thursday? We've got current news from around the world. Yes, it's quite Question and answer Thursday, and we have Danny's money with Daniel Baker over there in Korea. All right, everyone, how are you doing today? It is Thursday, almost the ending of the week, and I hope you really, really enjoyed the Wednesday service last night. So let's get this day started together on the Morning Star Drive. Just want to remind everyone to keep liking and commenting and want to hear from you guys and see how you're doing. If anything else, guys, we got to build this community, and I'm going to have to tell you right now, Community is building, and I'm super happy about this. This is one of the goals that I had uh, when we started this in, was it 2019 on March 16th? This is the first time I recorded this episode right after um, Sunstein preached. And I was like, this is something that I really, really want to do. And uh, when I look at it now, there's way more people that are commenting, way more people expressing themselves, people feeling that uh, they have an open platform to talk about anything that they want. So... For me, uh, I am really, really happy and thankful to God uh, to see everyone discussing, chatting together, having an open platform to discuss, just having different points of view and feeling okay about it and just sharing and understanding each other better. And I really feel like this is a vision coming true. Guys, just take a look at the transparency topic. That thing is uh, it's going really well and a lot of people are talking about it. And I enjoy just reading what people are thinking and I'm happy uh, it's moving forward from this point on. So yeah, I, I, I'm super, super thankful about that. And I'm grateful for all of you that are taking the risk to you know express yourselves and leave a comment of what you think about a certain topic. And that's something I think that is very, very important for all of us to have uh, in this history, right? Uh, yesterday too, I had this word study yesterday and this, this was a really, really deep and good one. And we talked about this week's message and uh, about I'm the vine, you are the branches. And we were kind of going through the definition of what does it mean like to be alive, right? In this history. And um, it's great that we're not only able to uh, express ourselves, figure it out through the words of God, what does that mean, but also have some like real world context of what does it mean to feel alive, right? Or to be, not even feel, to be alive in this history more than anything else. So uh, if you guys are on Patreon, go ahead, check out the word study. It's a really, really good one. It's like 40 minutes. Uh, we went over two different topics, uh, but I hope you guys will really enjoy that one too. Uh, already a bunch of people are um, are commenting on it in Patreon too, so I hope that you guys can do the same thing also. Um, yesterday, uh, I had this really, I think I've never had such a calming time before, like, especially in this time of transition, especially for myself, there's a lot of big changes going to, you know, possibly happening. Uh, I've been like extra sensitive and I, you know, I, I, and I think it's pretty understandable. I'm just extra sensitive to a lot of different things because I have a lot on my mind, a lot of big decisions I need to make. And, um, Yesterday, I just thought I should go on a walk. And right next to my house, there's a trail that goes into the forest. And I went into the forest. I should have. I shouldn't have worn slippers though, because it was so dusty. But I, I you know, I, I put on my phone, uh, put on my ear, my my uh, earphones, put on the noise canceling, uh, put on some like uh, calming music, and I just started walking through the forest. And as I was walking through the forest, I, I just started to have this conversation with God and the Holy Spirit. And it was out loud too. And the reason why I put on noise canceling wasn't that I don't want to hear nature. I put on the noise canceling so I could hear my own voice better. I'm not sure if that makes sense. You know, when you plug your ears, you can hear your voice when you speak quieter. So I put on noise canceling for that very reason. And uh, just being in that environment, being in God's creation, and just walking through the forest, seeing a stream next to me, all these trees, this foliage. And um, it was so therapeutic. Walk, enjoy, discuss what is my future? What am I going to do? And uh, I, I was really uh, inspired during that entire talk. I just talked about everything that I wanted to say. And it was really weird because, not weird, but it was really amazing because um, the biggest thing that happened was self-reflection. 
right? So I'm, I'm trying to hear, I'm here making this big decision, but a lot of self-reflection came into it, right? It wasn't so much of what is expected of me or what I have to do or what I feel I'm pressured into doing. It was more of look at your life right now, look at your last five years or last 10 years or whatever it is, and let's just take a look at it. And that self-reflection time was so good. And it was like that real quiet time together with the Holy Trinity. And, um, you know, as we're having these transitions in Providence, I just really uh, was so thankful to have that peaceful time. And it was weird because as you speak things out loud, you either realize it's true or you're like, oh, that's so true. Or you realize, oh, I shouldn't think that way. And it was, it was very, very therapeutic. So uh, those guys out there, if you get a chance to do that, uh, you know, I do suggest it. It works for me. It may not work for everyone. Not everyone may live by a trail that goes into the forest or whatever it is. But uh, I really, really had an amazing and awesome time. And I think I'm going to do another one today just because uh, it was just so amazing to be in that situation and spot. And it really, really helped me with my thoughts. And it gathered my thoughts because... It was a time of not talking to myself, but it was a time I was just talking to God. And, and I realized some things about myself too. I'm just like, oh, that's so true. This is what I'm kind of scared of. And there's a lot of things that uh, when we make big decisions in life, there's uncertainty and there's fear. And then for myself, there was like uh, uh, thoughts of failure too. Like, oh, like, uh, like uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit later about this as things kind of progress more and more. But uh, I just had a, an amazing and awesome time. So I hope that you guys um, will also be able to find those types of times that you guys can do too, more than anything else. All right. Um, oh, quick update on the poll. So those of you guys don't know that uh, every week now we're going to have a poll on uh, on the MSD YouTube channel because there's a, there's a thing you can do polls on. So if you go to the MSD um, page, go under community, there's actually a poll there. And this week's poll is about how far ahead do you think about your future? And uh, as more and more people are uh, doing the poll, it's very, very interesting. Uh, numbers are slowly changing here and there. Like even those like, you know, uh, those who think five years ahead are still at the top. They're still at the top at 43% now. They were over 50% before. They're now only at 43%. And then second and third is like retirement or one year ahead. And then... Um, uh, it, it's really, they're like very close at 20% and 17%. So, uh, if you guys go ahead, you know, let that be your, uh, you know, let that be something that you can, uh, you know, be part of the community with these polls that will be coming up pretty, uh, more and more polls coming up each and every week. So hope you guys really enjoy that too. Okay. Uh, today is question answer Thursday. So we have a bunch of questions today. We have four questions and I hope it, uh, these are, these are really, really good ones here. So, uh, first question is, um, Wondering about the whole virgin birth of Jesus is very, very unclear. And yes, it is pretty unclear. I do have a video on this in, I, I don't, did I put a video on this? Yeah, I did. I think I did put a video on it, but, oh no, I should do a video on this. That'd be kind of crazy, right? Uh, but uh, there is an answer to this one too. Uh, well, it's not even a clear answer, but there's an answer that Sun seems given. And uh, second question is, uh, uh, sometimes it's quite confusing. I wonder how I should study about the apostles one by one if I can't really confirm the writer. Like, because there's a lot of discrepancies or there's a lot of arguments of who is the actual writer. Sometimes it's interesting to learn about the characteristic of the apostles through the writing and background. Any suggestions? Uh, third question is, so far, I just have a rough idea on what I'm going to do for the next, five, uh, next few years. So this is about the poll, right? But I don't have an actual goal. Like what you say in the podcast today, by the way, I found that not many people in my circle have an actual goal. Most of them know Know what they don't want in their life, but they don't really know what they want in their life. And I was one of them when I was young, though, too, right? So this is more of a question of things change a lot as you go on, right? Yeah, and that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, things do change. Uh, so you know, why do we have to think that far ahead? Uh, last but not least is number four. Uh, number four is uh, when someone is doubting the word and the history. Does that mean they have not realized the word properly? Uh, my friend said to me, I've prayed and acted on the words for, lo for a long time now and seeing the fruits it brought and looking into the future, I am not convinced this is the absolute truth. So I want to go and live somewhere where I have comfortable, a comfortable life of faith and not be scared of being judged for failing to realize. Plus, I don't feel comfortable to sacrifice my life for faith. I am not convinced in. Okay, cool. So we have a uh, really, really good four questions here. We're going to go over that in the question and answer and uh, definitely would love to get more and more questions from you guys too. We got a good four questions for today and 
and um, we'll see how it works from here, okay? Uh, Espresso with Sky, new video coming out. It's going to be on abortion. Yes, it's going to be a touchy topic, uh, but this is going to be something that's going to bring more eyes to the channel. And, uh, you know, we get to talk about what Sunseam really talks, uh, what Sunseam thinks about. Of course, it's not going to be said in that way. Uh, and also, we'll be able to use Bible verses to help us to explain to other people also. All right, so that's something. Go ahead with your newcomers and yourself. You guys can learn a lot from that too. All right, so let's listen to some member music from around the world. Yes, it is time for the featured artist of the day. And today's featured artist is none other than someone I did a Sunday edition with. It is Daniel Patterson or MC One Love from the Rapture Collective over there in Australia. Great song called The Journey. It is his journey from being like an unbeliever to a Christian and coming into this history. And it's something that, uh, it's a great song. A lot of people like it. Great production value too. So uh, that's going to be the feature artist of the day. That's MC One Love from the Rapture Collective. And then the second song is Jew Star from New Zealand. Of course, it's the neighbor of Australia. We haven't heard uh, from her in a while. And that song is Busy B. And last but not least, we have Renee Lai from Taiwan doing a cover of GEM. And that song is Angels. <laughs> So dope. I met the Lord's history. Purpose ain't a mystery.
the bumbling bee is too busy to cry, buzzing away, looking for a flower to duck and hide, a worker or a queen. Sometimes I feel like it's the same thing, a princess asleep on a pea. Put off by the smallest of sufferings, but I'm still working on me. If I'm honest, I feel so strange. A fish without water, a cranium without a brain. Looking so good for the cameras, but feeling so very average. Where else can I go? There's only one river where living water flows. I already know the answer. The problem is in my own room. When I'm in the water. If I'm honest, I like routine, like to go swimming and slip and cups of tea, like seeing blanks on my schedule and filling them with my own woes. Now I'm overthrown and all around me are the people who can't do wrong. I smile and try to let it go. The problem is giving myself hope. To find a mountain where I can scream, I need a place to do my own thing. I need a cave where I can sing, and it's funny. There's no one to judge me, and I can try this way or that. I don't have to worry about falling flat. But this work to do is this even work too. Who can decide? Is it me? Is it you? Is it God? How far would I go if I could? I go far slower than I should. I'm only as good as how much I produce. Squeeze on my brain and pour out the juice. As much as I grind, my nose in the ground. But nobody knows. They don't notice I'm down. I haven't been busy. Enough. I'm floating too far, too far. Right? I'm in the water, and on the floor, both the following sheep and also the gold. I'm in the water, and on the floor, both the following sheep and also the gold. I'm in the water, and on the floor, both the following sheep and also the gold.
许是一场考验，看散落的心灵，此刻是否并肩？当你祈祷能看见奇迹，你是否相信那答案就是你？你是最平凡却最温暖的天使，此刻风雨里可惜有你的坚持，你带泪的笑容，有天会带来雨后的彩虹，世界因为你。多少次夜路颠簸，多少大雨滂沱，我们都曾度过。尽管会怕，会难过，同舟的你和我，才不必退缩。相信，那答案就是你。你是最平凡却最温暖的天使。此刻风雨里，可惜有你的坚持。And that is Renee Lai from Taiwan with、uh, just a great cover of the song from GEM. That song is called Angels.、Uh, before that, that was Juice Star from New Zealand with Busy B, and of course, feature artist today that is MC One Love, Daniel Patterson from the Rapture Collective、uh, over there in Australia with. The journey. All right. So let's get into some news going on around the world. And of course, as、uh, the brides of this history who are responsible because God hears the prayer of the righteous,、uh, we need to know what's going on in the world and really report and pray about these things. So the three reasons why we listen to the news: number one, see what God is doing; two, see what we need to report and pray for; and last but not least,、uh, what are the things we can comfort God's heart in? So let's first start off with、uh, the Russia-Ukraine crisis. What are the things that are going on there? Well, UK imports zero fuel from Russia for the first time on record. The UK imported no fuel from Russia in June for the first time on record, according to official figures. Imports of goods from Russia also fell to 33 million pounds in June, the lowest level since records began in January 1997. Western nations have imposed strict sanctions on Russia since it invaded Ukraine in February. The UK has pledged to phase out Russian oil imports by the end of the year and gas imports as soon as possible. Fuel imports from Russia fell by 499 million pounds, or 100, compared with the average for the previous 12 months to February. In 2021, the UK imported around 4% of its gas from Russia and 11% of its oil, according to the International Energy Agency. Exports of most goods to Russia had also decreased substantially by June, with machinery and transport equipment sales slashed by 91.3 percent to 118 million pounds. Overall, exports to Russia dropped by almost 70 percent to 168 million,、uh, compared with the monthly average in the 12 months、uh, to February. The only products to see a slight rise were chemicals, driven by an increase in exports of medicinal and pharmaceutical products, which are exempt from sanctions. The ONS said that,、uh, that apart from government-stipulated sanctions. 
concerns, trade between Russia and the UK was lessened as businesses voluntarily sought alternatives to Russian goods. The figures were released as Ukraine marked its day of independence exactly six months since the Russian invasion began. And as a result of Russia's invasion, the EU has said it will cut gas imports from Russia by two thirds within a year and has also agreed to ban all Russian oil imports, which come in by sea by the end of the year. Meanwhile, the U.S. has imposed a total ban on Russian oil and gas imports, uh, Russian oil and gas imports. Now, uh, so that's kind of what's going on with uh, the imports and the sanctions that are happening to Russia all over the world. And pretty crazy how U.K. has zero fuel coming in, uh, which is a big feat. But of course, then again, they were only like putting in four to five percent of their fuel from there. Right. Uh, also, in other news, we have how much grain is being shipped from the Ukraine now that it's opened its ports. Right. More than 630,000 tons of grain and other types of foods have been shipped from Ukraine's ports since the start of this month, says the UN. The first cargo was loaded on August 1st after Russia lifted its naval blockade of Ukraine, allowing ships to use a safe corridor through the Black Sea. However, Ukraine is exporting its grain more slowly than it was before the start uh, before the war started. So how much grain has been stuck in Ukraine? About 20 million tons of grain meant for export has been trapped in Ukraine since February, along with other foodstuffs such as maize and sunflower oil. And this has caused an undersupply of food and soaring prices in many countries around the world. Like the African Development Bank says it has contributed to a shortage of 30 million tons of food across the continent and a 40 percent rise in food prices. Nigeria, uh, it's helped increase the price of staples such as pasta and bread as much as 50%. In Yemen, which normally imports more than a million tons of wheat a year from Ukraine, saw the price of flour rise by 42% and rise by 20 and bread by 25%. In Syria, another big import of Ukrainian wheat, the price of bread has doubled. So the question is, is enough food being shipped? And you could, the Ukraine's government says in the first half of August, only 948,000 tons were exported by sea or by land. In the same period last year, the country exported 1.8 million tons, which is double of what they had right now. So on a visit to Odessa, UN Secretary General um, Antonio Guterres said getting food and fertilizer out of Ukraine in larger quantities is crucial to further calm commodity markets and to lower prices. Ukraine's government says it will be able to export 3 million tons of grain in September and 4 million in October. However, this depends on whether more shipping companies are prepared to send their vessels to the Ukraine. Right. So that's what's going on over there uh, with the Russia Ukraine crisis. Now, let's move over to the US. Now, this sounds good, but it's also not a good thing at the same time. So, student loan forgiveness Biden cancels $10,000 in student debt for millions of people. U.S. President Joe Biden will cancel up to $10,000 in federal student loans for millions of Americans who earn less than $125,000 each year. Biden will also forgive $20,000 of debt for students on Pell Grants, which applies to those in greatest financial need. The president will provide the details of his plan uh, at around 2.15 p.m. on uh, Wednesday. So it should be coming... Well. For, 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 for those of you guys who are on the other side of the world, it will be Wednesday at around uh, 5, 6 p.m. over there. Wednesday. Wednesday night. No. Yeah, it'll be Wednesday. No, it should be in the morning. It'll be 5, 6 a.m. in the morning for those uh, on Thursday. So it'll already be done by the time you guys hear this. But an estimated 43 million Americans owe a combined total of $1.6 trillion in federal student debt. Nearly one-fifth owe less than $10,000. So um, basically, Biden said, my administration is announcing a plan to give working and middle-class families breathing room as they prepare to resume federal student loan payments in January 2023. Uh, this was from his Twitter. And the, the temporary student loan pause First put in place in March 2020 will also be extended uh, a final time until December 31st of this year. The announcement follows more than a year of intense internal White House debate and mounting pressure from progressive Democrats, top Democrat Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York and Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts are among those who had pushed Biden to use his executive power to wipe out borrower debts. Wednesday's plan... A Wednesday's plan falls short of the $50,000 per, uh, per borrower plan that Schumer and Warren had asked for. So you got to understand how big this really is. A one-time cancellation of $10,000 for each borrower earning a maximum of $125,000 will cost the federal government around $300 billion, according to an estimate from the Penn Wharton Budget Model at the University of Pennsylvania. 
Republicans and some moderate Democrats have said debt cancellation will add to inflation by giving Americans more money to spend. And others say that blanket debt forgiveness is unfair to those who have already pay off student debts, right? So even that itself is a huge thing. People who are borrowing money to go to school, should they get, you know, should they not have to pay everything back, but they're basically going to pay everything off. And who's fitting, like who's flipping the bill, to be honest, right? Who's flipping the bill is someone's got to pay for it, right? So it's not like it's you're getting off scot-free. Everyone else paying their taxes, everyone else paying off their debts is going to be paying off these $300 billion in student loan debt for these people who couldn't do it on their own, right? And of course, I'm not saying that everyone is bad. I'm just saying that, you know, one of the biggest problems that people see in America is a lot of people take student loans for school in majors that can't get a job. You know what I mean? Like, for me, it just doesn't make any sense that if you're going to go to school anyways and you're going to take a loan, like, I'm not, I'm not quite understanding in the majority sense why they wouldn't have to pay it back. I got to think about all of the people who are very smart and organized and, you know, they have their budget friendly. They're paying off their debts. And the reality is this. If someone is not able to pay off their student loan debts and they're living a certain lifestyle or not undisciplined and unorganized in a certain way, then even if you pay off their debts, they're going to go back into debt. And most likely, they're going to have more than just like they're going to have more than just uh, student loans. They're going to have credit card debts, loan. They're going to have all these other different debts there too. It's not so much. Um, just give them relief, right? You're giving them relief of their own responsibility, but on top of it, if they don't learn how to manage money and do things well, they're basically going to be ending up in the same position they were before. I wouldn't be surprised, right? So it is a big topic, and the big question is, all right, debt forgiveness is there, but who's paying it now? The taxpayers are all going to be paying $300 billion, and it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know where, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to get political or anything like that because uh, other people might say, but, you know, I have, but, I have, you know. <sighs> yeah. Either way. Either way. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to say it is uh, not going to help the inflation and recession. It's just not going to help. Either way. Let's go into the last one. Uh, we're going to South Africa as South Africans in uh, South Africans in nationwide strike in protest against cost of living. People across South Africa are taking part in a nationwide strike in protest against the rising cost of living. Singing songs from the country's liberation struggle, thousands marched towards the president's office demanding reductions in prices. Inflation has hit nearly 8%, the highest in 13 years, and around a third of South Africans are unemployed. This is the most unequal country in the world, according to the World Bank, and many are finding things tough. Thousands of protesters have been marching, chanting, and holding signs echoing familiar complaints from workers around the world, say... Basically uh, saying, say no to high inflation and stop the steep increase in the price of petrol. The country's two largest union group uh, groupings who called the strike urged the government to intervene to cap fuel prices, reduce interest rates, and introduce a universal basic income of roughly $90 U.S. a month. Uh, around 5,000 people took part in the rally in Pretoria. The nationwide strike comes as South Africa grapples with the economic impact of global events such as COVID and the war in Ukraine. Under the gaze of Pretoria's union buildings, the Office of President President Ramaphosa um, spoke to a group of women who said the cost of living crisis had driven them to desperate measures to try and make ends meet. Uh, one person was even saying they spent, they made $210 US for the month and half of it is spent just on transport and they don't have enough to buy full groceries. It's basically only the bare necessities they're able to get. So uh, it's pretty crazy what's happening over there all around the world as we see uh, what's happening with Russia and Ukraine with the COVID crisis and the lockdowns and governments kind of mishandling their policies and their money that is causing massive inflation. So, you know, a lot of this is a problem from government, right? From government and such like that too, that we have to really pray for our governments. And I think that's something that, that's very important for us in this history is we can't really, like, we're not those to get into, you know, we're not the ones that should be getting into these, like, these huge rallies and protests and stuff like that. Uh, like that shouldn't be a major part of our life because ours is we know that it is God who's in control. But of course, humans make the mistakes, which means we need to pray for our leaders. And that's a huge thing for us, too. Right. We really, really need to pray for our leaders more than anything else. So that is something that I, I do hope that all of us start doing even more. 
Um, if you're complaining about your government, you got to pray for your government. You can't just say, oh, my government, all oh, this government sucks. You got to pray for it, right? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Even if you're not from America or China, you need to pray for those two countries because those two are the two largest economies in the world. And if those two go crazy and recession and inflation, it affects everyone across the board. It makes no difference, right? Because it's number the first and second largest economies in the world, right? And you'll know how powerful the American economy is and how much you need to pray for America because America is only a fourth of the population of China and yet it's the number one economy, right? That's how big uh, America is when it comes to uh, capitalism and uh, the amount of money that they make. So I hope it's something that uh, we can keep in mind for America and China because they are huge, right? And we got to pray for this world too also, all right? So that's the top three news around the world. So let's get into some sporting news and we're going to start off with some golf. Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy launch tech-infused golf league featuring virtual venues, primetime matches. Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy are launching a tech-infused golf league in partnership with the PGA Tour that will have players competing on six three-man teams in 15 regular season matches and a playoff starting in January 2024. The new league, called the TGL, will feature two-hour 18-hole matches on a virtual course. The matches will take place in prime time on Monday nights in a custom-made venue in a yet-to-be-determined location. Renderings released Wednesday by TGL indicate that the venues will feature a simulator that players will hit longer shots into, along with an authentic green area for chipping and putting. The matches will probably be played between January and April, and each of the six teams will compete five times during the 15-week schedule. So it's basically like, you know, you go into Korea you go into a golf simulator machine but they're going to do it as a game and have like these pros going into it on TV and stuff like that too and of course what's the reason for all this it's to uh fight against what is happening with um the live golf tour tour uh live golf tour too so they need to be making even more money when it comes to the PGA tour because they cannot compete with the the amount of money the live tour has okay so uh with that in mind uh that is the top three news around the world so let's go into some sporting news uh we're gonna start off with um Oh, no, that is first sporting news. Second sporting news, sorry about that, is soccer. In soccer news, uh, Newcastle agreed to sign Alexander Isak from uh, Real Sociedad for a club record 70 million euro transfer. And they agreed to sign the striker, Alexander uh, Isak. Uh, that's the highest that they've ever paid. And it also comes with 5 million euro in add-ons, sources have told ESPN. Also, Manchester United have signed Casemiro, uh, the Brazilian's... Um, uh, Brazilian has a 70 million euro uh, price tag on him. He comes to Old Trafford on Monday and there's a split opinion on him and has raised questions about whether the transfer policy at Old Trafford, actually, what it actually looks like. Um, this is a 30-year-old. This is giving a 30-year-old a four-year contract worth more than 350,000 pounds a week. Is that bad business or does it not matter when you're getting one of the best defensive midfielders in the world who also happens to be a serial winner? So ultimately, like all transfers, only time is going to tell. Arsenal, too, uh, loan a record signing Nicolas Pepe to Nice. So Arsenal winger Nicolas Pepe is uh, set to join Nice on a season-long loan. Uh, the 27-year-old is expected to travel to France to undergo a medical after the two clubs agree, agreed a deal which does not include an obligation or option to buy. So that's quite interesting there, too. And uh, last but not least, uh, we're going to go into NCAA football. Remember, uh, this is not NFL. This is college football. And when you hear these numbers, it's ridiculous. Um, Alabama head coach. Right has been given another raise and extension until 2030. So Nick Saban is once again the highest paid football coach at a public university. Alabama's Board of Trustees approved a one-year extension and a raise for Saban during a meeting on Tuesday. The amended deal runs through February 2030 and will pay him an average of... This is a, this is a, a university football coach. $11.7 million a year. Yes. The raise edges Saban's annual compensation over that of Georgia coach Kirby Smart, who signed a new deal earlier in the offseason that will pay him an average of $11.2 million over 10 years. Also included in the contract are postseason bonuses of $75,000 for appearing in the SEC championship game, $125,000 for winning it, $200,000 for appearing in the New Year's, um, New Year's Six Bowl game, $400,000 for appearing in a national championship semifinal game, $600,000 for appearing in a national championship game, and eight hundred thousand dollars for winning it so i'm at look at if, if he does all these things how much money is that 
That's like 14, that's 2 million, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 million dollars in bonuses for the playoffs. And that on top of his 11.7 million dollar contract. And if you guys want to know, that's how big called just football is in America. And he's not the only coach making uh, that much money. There are six coaches in college football making over $9 million a year or more. So uh, if anything else, guys, that is how huge it is uh, in college football more than anything else. All right. So there it is, guys. More than uh, that is the news in sports and also the news when it comes to the world. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. But you know what that means? It means it is the golden time. And yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. I hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure they are also looking forward to our time of praise. So what are we going to be singing today on the golden time? We're going to start off with a new song from PEMD. So this is not a praise song, but it's a song that was made by our members. This song is called Don't Forget. And then we'll go into the fulfillment of hope, an oldie but a goodie. And then we'll end things off with... Everything I am is because of your love. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity.
Because one thousand years out there It's nothing like just one day with me
this feeling in my heart Could I ever repay the love you've shown me Your love that cannot be expressed with words alone Oh Lord, I'm truly thankful for your love I was anxious alone and wandering in darkness I was not even sure if I could live again Your love that cannot be expressed with words alone That precious love of yours has saved my life Lord, you have always prayed for me Everything I am is because of your love. Uh, before that, uh, the fulfillment of hope. It's a very, very old song. Maybe a lot of people haven't heard this one before. If you're very new, and before that is a brand new song that just came out. It is a PEMD. It's not one of the praise songs that Sunsea made or the ones that you know Pastor John or like El Jung made. These are like songs that are made from our members, and they are just as good. So that song was "Don't Forget." Okay, so now that our hearts are made ready and prepared uh, through the time of praise, let's get into today's. Um, 
uh, Q&A Thursday. A lot of good questions coming out here, and I hope it's something that uh, we can all benefit and learn from too. Uh, first question is talking about uh, the whole virgin birth of Jesus is a bit unclear to me, okay? So one thing we do have to understand is Sun Simon said two things about it, and both things can be right. So the first thing he said, it's a miracle. And honestly, a miracle can be many different things. It doesn't literally have to be like... Um, you know, something coming out of nowhere, right? It doesn't have to be the miracle that we think in our mind. So it is a miracle, but also there are, um, there is a set way that God has made for babies to be born, okay? So what we're looking at here is going, okay, so what does that mean? So does that mean, was it literally a virgin birth or is it not a virgin birth? So uh, one thing we do need to know that in the Bible, there are actually three different definitions for the word virgin, right? So there is a physical word for virgin that all of us know today, which means someone who has, you know, never had sex before, right? So that is a virgin, all right? So there is the, the virgin that we know. Now, the second uh, definition of virgin is the Hebrew word for virgin, which, which actually means a young unmarried woman. And that's assuming also that they're pure and clean like the virgin we know today, but it means a young unmarried maiden, right? So it's a young woman who is unmarried. So that is the uh, Jewish or the Hebrew um, definition of a, uh, of a virgin. Now, the third one is interesting is the spiritual meaning of the word virgin itself, okay? So in the Bible, virgin is used in multiple different contexts, but one of them is it talks about Israel as my virgin Israel. Now, here's the thing. As we even know, when it talks about God talking about a relationship, what he says is that if you go to idols, then you are committing adultery. You're an adulterous generation. It's not that everyone is committing adultery. It's they are an adulterous generation, right? Adulterous meaning turning away from your one love, right? Their one love or husband or master or father is supposed to be God, but instead they turn to other gods and that makes them adulterous. Like in a spiritual sense, they should be only God, but instead go to another God. So that is committing adultery in the spiritual sense. So when we look at the three different versions, um, was Israel uh, from, you know, from Israel comes the virgin. Like, what is the virgin? Well, technically speaking, from the spiritual sense, it came from Israel, which is the virgin country that God talks about, right? So it is the virgin coming from that. Second one is, uh, is it a virgin birth like what most people are thinking? And in uh, almost every situation that I've heard Sunsim talk about it, he says there is a way to have a baby. It's just that we're not sure uh, how that actually happened, right? So it's something... Uh, there are a lot of theories out there. I don't want to talk about theories. All, I, all we know is Sunstream says there is a way that babies are born. So we know that there's a natural way of giving birth. There's no such thing as like, you know, like God spitting a seed into your stomach and all of a sudden it gives birth to the Son of God, right? Because now we know even today when we know about the Holy Son lesson, like Jesus is not literally like from heaven, right? There is the, the original entity and then there is the branch entity. So if we understand the Holy Son really, really well, we know that Jesus was the branch entity, right? The representative coming from a human being, actually coming from sperm and egg, right? So when we understand this really, really well, then we know that, oh, it can't happen that way where it's literally that, that type of miracle where God spits into uh, her womb and then all of a sudden she gives birth. Right. And but that still gives us a, another mystery is then, well, then how did it happen? Because Joseph was like, oh, my goodness, what the heck happened here kind of thing. Right. And that is something I don't know if we'll ever get the real answer for it. But we do have an answer of uh, there is a natural way to have kids. And that's, you know, there's only one way. Right. There's only one way to have children. So something happened that is natural that we know of. However, even though we know of this, we're not really sure exactly who or what happened. Right. So uh, those are a couple things to take a look at. And it's not something I usually talk about with to um, like to people like very, very deeply because it can become a very, very sticky topic and people get very sensitive to this. And I just agree. It's a it's a miracle. It's a miracle. I, I don't go any, any I don't go any further beyond that. But uh, there are a couple of different meanings that we need to understand when it comes to that story. Uh, second one. Second question is. Uh, how should we how should we study about the apostles? Because I gave a story on Apostle John yesterday, and it's very very interesting because the story of John the Apostle uh, talks about a, there's a lot of discrepancies, and some scholars believe that uh, Apostle John didn't write 
all or some of his own books, the five books, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Gospel of John, and Revelation, right? So uh, here's a question is, how should I study about the apostle one by one if I can't really confirm the writer, right? And the answer is we have enough information that like we have uh, the vast majority that agree that these people are the writers. And honestly, we're not going to get an answer until when? Probably not until we go to heaven, right? And sometimes it's interesting to learn about the characteristic of the apostle through their writings and background. So how should we do this? Ultimately, uh, what we know about the Bible is the Bible is written by human beings, obviously, inspired and breathed by God. And we know that, you know, as even though God is not controlling situation by situation where it's like, you know, I want you to write this letter like this. I know he's not like in detail showing you how to write it, but God is the one in charge. And this is the Bible that has been given entrusted to us. And part of it is, has to do with our faith. And I do talk about this a lot is part of our, you know, a big chunk of our life in this history or any history, even in Christianity, it's based on faith. It really is. Right? We have to start off with what we understand and what we know, the things that we've gone through in our life to finally have faith to say God is there. Right, There is faith. And, and I tell this every, thing to everyone is this whole world, even if you're not in religion, is based on faith. Finding a husband or wife, it's based on faith because you're by faith, you're thinking there's no one else out there, even though you haven't met every single person. Right? What about your major? You got to base it on faith. Like you have faith that this is the right one for you, even though you don't really know it's the right one for you, right? Getting a job, getting this or that, it's very, very different, right? And we have to understand this at that level of uh, a lot of the things, like whether, whether it's believing in God, finding a husband or wife, getting your major in your university, picking the job that you want, a lot of it is based on research that you do on these companies but even if you do all the research in the world you'll never get a hundred percent it is absolutely this you can't we just don't have all information right and that's why when it comes to the bible i have enough faith in the bible that yeah there's a lot of people that are talking about this but it doesn't go against what has been written in the words and what god is permitted to be in the bible right and that's something that i have faith in Right. So I, you know, study, I would study them. I, I, I still study the word. Well, if you want to study about apostle to apostle, in all honesty, we don't have a lot of information on the apostles. We just don't. Right. I don't, I don't know anyone who has that much information on all the apostles. And it's very, very hard for us. Um, like there's some that we are like 90 percent, some are 80 percent. But even when I was talking about Apostle John, yeah, there are some discrepancies in there. And some people do say it might not be John, uh, Apostle John. However, uh, the vast majority are agreeing for now that it's Apostle John, and we can study it. And the words itself are great, right? So even if you're like, oh, I want to study about the apostles, and the answer is, well, it's hard to study about the apostles because we don't have much on apostles. Like, all we have is what's in the Bible. And even what we have in the Bible is not them giving a personal testimony. It's just what they've done. So it's kind of hard uh, to really try to study about each and every apostle. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do because there is such a lack of information. So if you were to base your goal on studying apostle one by one, uh, that could be a little difficult because a lot of it is theorized. It is. Like think about, we just talked about the Sons of Thunder for uh, John and James. We don't really understand or know why they're called sons of thunder, but we are guessing by other verses, this is why they're called the sons of thunder. It's just interesting that they're called the sons of thunder, right? What does that mean? So uh, my suggestion to you is uh, go with what you have. Yeah, go with what you have for now until we get something, better information. It's kind of the same as, uh, for instance, when you look at science, science is always making theories and it makes sense. And then until we find a better theory or more clear theory, we just keep studying more and more. We get deeper and deeper into it. So I, I don't think... It should be a huge thing, but I would say it would be very, very difficult to study only on apostles because there's not a lot of information on them, okay? Let's go to number three. Uh, so far, I have a, a rough idea what I'm going to do in the next few years, but I don't have an actual goal, uh, right? And some people, you know, and, and since we come to Providence, our goals change with time, right? And that's true. Uh, and uh, even this person found that in their circle of friends, they don't have actual goals. Most of them know what they don't want in their life, but they don't really know what they want in their life, right? And I was one of them when I was young though too, right? So here's the thing. When it comes to goals, 
there are different types of goals that you can have. For instance, uh, some people are pretty set on, I'm going to be a doctor, or I'm going to be a lawyer, or I'm going to be a mechanic, or whatever it is. Some people are set on those things. So when they have a goal of being a mechanic, a doctor, whatever these things, what they do. My big goal is to be a mechanic, but that means on the way, my little goals are, I got to go to mechanic school. I got to learn about cars. I got to learn about this. And I got to learn, and I got to get, got to get my uh, trade degree, whatever it is. And that will all lead for me to become a mechanic, Right. So even for us too in this history, just because we come to Providence doesn't mean you have to change your job, right? It, like it doesn't change your job. It's not all of a sudden you come to Providence and now everyone's a pastor. However, some people who come to Providence might say, I have a new goal. It's now to become a pastor. So if you want to become a pastor, I got to go to seminary. I got to learn how to pray better. I got to come to pre -dawn. I got to do this and this. I got to learn the word more. And then they can become a pastor of a church, right? And that's, that's something where... You need to have that long-term goal that you're reaching towards. Like what's what's going to happen in the next five years? Some people are going to be, um, when it the longer your goal is, the more general it becomes. So the longer down the line it is. Like 10 years, it's not going to be, I'm going to be working for like this, 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 and I'm going to make exactly this much. No, it's like when you get really, really far down the line, like 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, there's going to be these larger general goals. Like I'm going to have my own house very general, and it's not going to change whether you come to Providence or not. Getting a house, you need a house, right? I'm going to get a house. I'm going to buy a house. I'm not going to be renting anymore in 10 years, right? There's, there's an actual goal, and then you're going to have to make goals for those goals, for that goal to buy a house. How much money do you need to be saved by this time? How much money do you need to be saved by this time, right? And one thing that's very interesting is, right, when people say that they don't know what they want in life, they only know what they don't want, and why is, the, why is that? is because there are, let's pretend like there's more than this. There's 10,000 choices to do in life, 10,000. And you've tried 10 and you don't like all 10 of them, which means it's very easily you can say, I don't like those 10 things, but there's still 9,990 more things to look at and I still don't know what I want to do. And that's why it's very, very easy to know what you don't want and very difficult to know what you do want because you'd have to start going through these things one by one, trying things out, finding this, finding that, finding who you are and yourself until you eventually get to a place that you want to be. Like a goal doesn't really necessarily mean uh, a goal in life is not necessarily a job, right? A goal in life could be other things. For instance, a goal in life could be becoming a great father. That could be a goal. Becoming a great son. Becoming someone who is relied upon because you're patient. You're, you're a good listener. Those are all other different goals that you have too, right? So if you take a look at it just from a job perspective, it's very, very difficult because the younger you are, the more you haven't tried. And the more you haven't tried, you only know what you have tried and you don't really like what you have tried. And that's why it's super easy to know what you don't like, right? And as you grow older, you're going to mature and you're going to have different things to think about. So when you're younger, your goals are, let me graduate high school. Let me graduate this year. I want to make the basketball team. I want to get an A. Like those are the types of goals you have when you're really young. And you're not really thinking that much further, right? Until you get a better idea of who you are and what you really want. And as you get older and older, you get a better idea, right? So having goals is super amazing. And I'm going to tell you this, psychologically wise, uh, if you want to get rid of negative feelings and negative emotions, the best way is to have goals because positive feelings come when you work towards a goal. Positive feelings are positive emotions come when you work towards a goal, right? And if people don't have goals, it's much, much easier to have negative thoughts and not having positive thoughts. And that's why it's very important, I believe, that all people have some types of goals, whether it's your character, whether it's your spiritual life. Right. And, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to me, like working on vision workshops for individuals, they will have um, you have, you need to have goals in different aspects of your life. What is my spiritual goal? Right. What is my mental goal? What is my financial goal? What is my career goal? What is my family goal? What is my relationship goal? There's goals in all different areas. And these are things that we can look at generally too is I want to have, I want to be, I want to have this type of relationship with my mom or my dad or my children, right? And these are goals that keep coming out and you're working on ways to get to that goal, right? And that's why having goals is a very, very important part of, you know, uh, living a proper life and a meaningful life too, all right?
Cool. So uh, that's question number three, which means we'll get into uh, question number four. Question number four is a really cool one. Uh, really, a uh, very real life one is when someone is doubting the word in the history, does that mean they have not realized the word properly? So my friend said to me, I have prayed and acted on the words for a long time now, seeing the fruits it brought and looking into the future. And I am not convinced this is the absolute truth. So I want to go and live somewhere where I have a comfortable life of faith and not be scared of being judged for failing to realize. Plus, I don't feel comfortable to sacrifice my life uh, for faith I am not convinced in. Okay, so here are a couple things in these words that I would agree with, right? Why would you want to sacrifice your life for something you're not convinced by? Absolutely, right? So convinced by meaning this person has been trying it for a certain period of time and they're and all the things that they've been through, they're not convinced by it, right? So for me too, same thing. Why would I sacrifice my life for something I'm not convinced by? And that's great, right? That's something that is a true statement, all right? Now, what's talked about right before that are two other pieces of information that are very interesting. She does not want to, this, not just she, I don't know, I don't know if it's a male or female. I don't want to be scared of being judged for failing to realize. So we see that there is a problem of culture inside that church or that, that, that environment they're in where they're constantly being told that you are, you know, you haven't realized, you didn't realize the word, you didn't realize the Lord, which means that there is a feeling of constantly being judged all the time. How come I can't feel God? Well, you didn't realize. Well, how come I can't pray? You didn't realize. How come I, and everything's about you didn't realize and it's this feeling of being judged. So you see that the environment that they're in or the culture they're in seems to be a place where they're constantly being judged all the time. Judged for not going to service. Judged not for waking up for pre dawn Judged not for uh, this and this and oh, because you didn't realize. It's because you didn't realize the Lord enough, right? And Honestly, if I was in that type of setting, I wouldn't want to be there too. I honestly wouldn't want to be there also. Not because of the history, more because of what the heck kind of environment is this that I always feel judged all the time. And that's a big hint that this person is giving us is I'm scared of being judged. Well, if you were in a very accepting environment where everyone was super supportive, would they still think this way? And the answer would probably be no. They probably wouldn't feel that way, right? Because right before this, say, I want to live a comfortable life of faith. And guess what? It's uncomfortable being in a place where you're constantly judged, right? That's why they want to go somewhere, right? So usually uh, what happens when it comes to truth, like for instance, myself, uh, putting the words into action, even before putting the words into action, I was already convinced because I come from Christianity and from Christianity, I love the Bible. And because I love the Bible, so many questions. And when I listen to the 30 lessons and, and the word, it's crazy. And even that in itself is enough for me. It really is. It really is enough for me. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. The thing that I'm not so happy about is sometimes the culture that we foster, right? The culture that we foster and the way that we bring people in, like how we raise people in this history, right? So, you know, seeing the fruits it brought, that's a little bit difficult because what kind, what are, what kind of fruits are there, right? Let me give an example. Uh, some people will, th will think that Providence is a place that needs to be easy, but look at we're being slandered again, and this is happening here, and we're going to court, and this is happening here. How can this be the history of God when we're going through all this mess? And the answer is, it has nothing to do with that. History of God is history of God, no matter what. So if we're talking about fruits of like going through difficult times, that is something that every single person in life will go through, no matter what, whether you're Christian or not. Right? It's like it's life itself. Imagine, imagine like people who believe that, oh, now, now that we've been raptured, all these other things, sun seems out now, why are we still going through this heartache? And then I'll, I'd point straight to, well, what about when Jesus resurrected? That's the ultimate pinnacle of Christianity is when he's resurrected. And then 30 years later, what happens? 40 years later, the temple of God is destroyed. 40 years later, Christians are being even more persecuted. They're being killed. They're being hunted down. They have to have services in quiet privateness in the catacombs. Going through difficulty is normal. Difficulty is a normal part of life. No matter where you go, there's no such thing as a comfortable life. You may be comfortable physically because you have enough money, but there's no such thing as a comfortable life, right? When someone says, I've prayed and acted on the words for a long time now, and that's something that we're not going to judge people on, but we need to, you know, we can't judge what they've done. We can only go by what we've done. Like for me, 
to really test something out, I go to the extreme, right? Because if we know that God is fair, like Sansip said, God is a mirror. If one person, uh, if someone puts in 5%, then God shows them 5%, right? It's almost like, um, I want to make a lot of money, so let me put in $5. And then guess what? Uh, the interest on $5, let's say, is like 5%. So what's 5% of 5, or even 5% of $1 5 cents, so it's 25 cents. You'll gain 25 cents in a year. And what are you going to say to yourself? Ah, the fruits, eh, not very good. Nah, fruits, yeah, 25 cents, come on. But let's just say you put in a million dollars. So what's 5% of a million? It's like $50,000 a year. You can live off that. That's a salary of $50,000 per year, right? Is, is, that's right, right? Yeah, so think about that. The more you put in, even though it's the same 5%, you get to see it in a bigger way, right? And this is why one of the big things is people do need to do things, try things in an extreme way. And I'm not saying this person didn't. I'm totally not saying this, right? But you two out there, if you really want to see extreme results, like people who want to get rich have to invest extreme to get extremely rich. And on the flip side, uh, if those who are conservative will put in halfway and they'll get half of what, you know, what's normal. And this is why the rich get richer and the poor stay poor is because it's amount is what they're willing to be willing to put in. Right. So if you're doubting the word, I can understand it. And if anything else, I would sit down with someone and talk about, oh, what are the doubts of the word? And then they're going to say, oh, I doubt this history. Well, how would you doubt this history? Right. So. Sometimes, like we're going to talk about reality of, of what people go through life is. For instance, when you go through a really difficult time personally in life, then everything else becomes more sensitive. You're sensitive to everything else. So when something that's not even that big comes out, then it becomes bigger in your eyes, right? So that's when it says when someone is doubting the word and the history, well, sometimes people can doubt because uh, they forget, right? If you forget, you will die. If you forget how great this history is or the things that you've learned and the feelings and the testimonies you've been through, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, Sun seems going back to an investigation. Oh my goodness. Then you, then if you forget that feeling from the very beginning, you'll be like, oh my gosh, is this really the right history? But if you think about it very, very carefully, history is not about everything being comfortable. That's not what it is. When you come to believe in God, faith means what? To have faith is, even though it's difficult, I have faith, it's still good. I have faith, God is still there. I have faith. Faith is like a relationship. It's like when you when you fall in love and when you get married to someone, is it, ah, I, I love you only when it's good? No. Faith is required because life isn't always good. Life is going to have difficult things thrown at you. Life is going to have all these things. And it's about faith itself. Right. If I originally believe and I make my make my vows to my wife and I say, I believe and I love you and I love you with all my heart for the rest of my life, I'm going to love you. Right. And then when, you know, when things get really difficult, we don't have a lot of money, then I leave her. Then I, that means I didn't really love them. Right. I didn't really have faith in them either. Right. So when it comes to this history, yeah, sometimes people lose faith because life is hard. People lose faith because life is hard. People lose faith because they stop praying. People lose faith because they stop. They lost the connection. And I would say that even when I look at the word study for today on Patreon, the exact same thing happened is people should, if you want to be united with God, remember there's, there was a message last year during the, it was like, oh, we are all resurrected. We are alive now. But now exactly a year later, how many people have kept being alive? Yeah, it's true. You can disconnect. You can lose that faith. That's part, that's all part of it, right? When someone says, oh, I've tried everything. And I've acted on the words for a long time now. And the answer is, well, technically speaking, we've acted on the words all our life, but not literally all the time because sometimes we falter. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we make mistakes. And because of those things, we lose faith and feeling and all these other different things. You got to take a look at it in like, you have to, we have to look at it in a much, much bigger picture. In the end, right, with this history, a lot, you know, there's, there's always reasons why people leave this history. There's always going to be a reason, but it's not going to be because, oh, this is not, you know, uh, is the reasons are because usually because people disconnect, people aren't as fervent as before, people begin to doubt, people begin to, and when they start doubting, every small thing becomes something that, you know, like it snowballs bigger and bigger. 
remember when people fa- when people lose uh, faith in the history or when they lose um, uh, that faith, what happens is it never started that way. It's not like a big explosion from the beginning. It's something really small, like feeling judged. Someone saying, oh, you failed to realize. And that eats away at your heart and slowly it grows more and more. People like that's why it's very, very hard to say, oh, I've been doing this all my life. And the answer is, even if you've been doing it all your life, we've been through things and there's always going to be a key core moment or thing that really affected us so that we are no longer able to do it powerfully like we did before. Right. And we've lost the feeling. We've forgotten what God has done for us. We've forgotten all the grace. And this is when we lose hope. Right. And we lose faith. So when someone is doubting the word in the history, it means they've been, it's been a while. It's not, it's not a decision you make on the spot. It's been a long time. And this is why, you know, for, if anything else, when you, whenever you see someone in this situation, you're not trying to fix people. You're not trying to answer all the questions for them. You just got to love people. They're missing the love. They've only felt judgment. They've only felt an environment that wasn't very healthy. And they just need love. They really, really just need love. Right. And we have to be those that provide it for them more than anything else. Okay. So that is something that I, I really hope that, yeah, I know. Does that mean that they haven't, they failed to realize? No, because realization is ongoing. It's kind of like this week's and last week's message. Faith is a daily life thing, it's not a one shot thing. So you can realize deeply and do nothing about it. And then slowly it fades away. And, and later on, you completely forgot, just like John the Baptist, he completely forgot. That feeling of when he baptized Jesus, a dove descended and he heard God's voice. It just takes some time and you forget. You have to constantly be living in it to relive and to, to reignite that fire and that faith. And this is why so many people lose their faith and lose, their, uh, lose that fire inside their heart, right? So I, I do think, did the person realize? No, I actually think that person did realize. It's just after a long while, you slowly, like all that faith and that realization dissipates and you get to a point where you're just going through the motions. Okay? People don't leave like so easily like that, right? There is something that happened and it's for a long time. It's been kind of drawn out until it reached a certain point and they're like, I, I can't do this anymore. That's what kind of, that's kind of the reality. They couldn't do it in the beginning. And when they realize at their peak, they couldn't do it, right? And that's why they keep staying. But you know, there comes a time where you kind of lose it because it's been such a long time you've been in that state, right? So praying and acting on the words. Uh, for me, it's too general because some people might not get deep prayer. Some people not might not, you know, might be praying, but there might not be really connecting, right? And acting on the words is just kind of, you can just go through the motions, right? So for me is I would I would love to just sit down and talk with someone, not trying to figure out what's their problem, just like loving them so that they know that, hey, no matter what, it's fine. If you're not, not going to stay, I understand. But, you know, let's just talk and just see what's going on in your life and just, you know, just have a good talk with them more than anything else. And, you know, if someone has spent that much time thinking about this and finally saying with their lips that they don't want to be here anymore, then they've been doing it for a long time and it's a hard decision to make. And this is why they just need someone to talk to. Meet with them. You know, not daily, but, you know, just meet with them, see how they're doing, talk to them. And uh, I think it's a very, very good idea to give them what they haven't had, which probably is a lot of love, right? Uh, within the within the church or whatever it is, right? And uh, is it a fail for realization? I don't know if it's a fail of reali- realizing, but it could be a fail of keeping their realizations or growing their realizations even more, right? Everyone's realized deeply. That's why we're in this history. But it's usually when you stop realizing or you... Uh, don't realize any more deeply or you just, you know, you're just kind of going through the motions and this is when people start to lose their faith more than anything else. All right. So I hope that helps you guys out when it comes to the Q and a uh, Thursday. Uh, that's something I think that's very, very important that especially that last question too. Okay. So let's get into our last uh, song for today. Not the last segment. The last song is going to be song of choice on this boy band Thursday. And it is a friend of mine who went to a K-pop concert of this group. I've never heard of. They're called 17. And they said, Oh, I'm such a fan of them now. And I was like, all right. So I went on the internet to check who they are. And yes, they are legit boy band. And um, I, you'd think they'd have 17 members. They only have 13 members. And they debuted in 2015. Uh, this is a song uh, I'm going to introduce to everyone here. And it's called uh, Don't Want to Cry. Don't 
울고 싶지 않아 울고 싶지 않아 사랑해서 사랑한다는 말이 부족해서 그 어떤 말을 꺼내봐도 너 하나만 아끼던 날 두고서 어디 간 거니 내가 쉬어 That is 17, a K-pop boy band, 13 members, debut 2015. That is Don't Wanna Cry. Leave in the comments below what you guys actually think about it. It'd be kind of cool to see um, uh, what you guys think about this. You know, this is a group that's not BTS. So I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that. All right. So let's get into the last segment for today. And yes, it is the last segment. And once again, we have Daniel Baker over there in Korea. He's one of the reps for the SS. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. This is Daniel Baker with... Danny's money. Hey guys, welcome to your favorite podcast segment, Danny's Money. Now, I just want to say this was the most eventful summer I think I've had in my life. Now, the reason is simple. I've got a new mission, but also uh, I got to play with these SS a lot. So I went on four to five trips with the SS, and during those trips, of course, I spent a lot of money. Now, the reason for me to spend an excess amount of money was because I'm constantly outside of the house. Now, I, am, I was always busy during this time, but I w also wanted to get out of the extremely hot, hot house. Uh, around 1 to 3 p.m., my house would get extremely hot. It was like 
like 30 degrees Celsius, which I don't know in Fahrenheit, you guys can look it up. And it would be extremely hot, so I, I pretty much can't be there. Now I'll go outside of the house uh, to, there's a center where the SS gets to be in, and I can also go there to get lunch and those kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost always out, outside of the house. There were many times within the week that I would just be at my house one or two times because sometimes I'll, you know, sleep over at other people's house and do those kind of stuff. So during those times, I needed to buy more stuff like dinners, ice cream, and sometimes like jelly and those kinds of snacks. Now, this was not the best thing to do to obtain my beach body. However, it makes me cool down and really take my time with the really hot weather. Now, do you guys know what time or what season we're going into right now? Now we're going into the fall. The fall is one of my favorite seasons. The weather is perfect, not many bugs, and it is a very comfortable time. However, during this time, we are going to prepare for the uncomfortable. Are we going to keep the spending habits of the summer? For me, that my answer to that question is no. I need to crack down, make and save money to use in the winter when it's very uncomfortable. So this reminds me of the parable of the grasshoppers and the ants. The ants are working very hard for the f during the fall and the summer. They gather resources and food for the winter. The grasshopper is lying in the sun, getting a tan, playing the violin, learning music, you know, composing music, and just chilling. He's having an amazing time. Then the winter comes, everything is cold. The grasshopper like begs to the ants for some food, and the ants were like, bro, what were you doing in the summer and the fall? During those times, you could have prepared and they refused to give him money or they refused to give him resources. This parable made me realize that there is a time to spend money and to use your money abundantly. Um, this, is, this is usually when you're very young and you're traveling, like there's no care in the world. You just spend the money to, you know, experience stuff. And there are times where you primarily motivate yourself to save and make money. At least for me right now, because it's fall, I need to switch into making money mode. What I recommend for everyone listening to the podcast right now is identify your situation and choose what mode you need to be in. Oh, right now I'm going to have uh, two to three trips ahead of me. Now I'm just going to spend money. I'm going to you know, spend the saved up money so I can really experience life. Or your situation could be, you know, um, I'm going to prepare for those trips and really save up and spend money. Now, now I'm going to change into that. So maybe during the winter I can go have a nice time. I maybe I'm planning a, a trip to Japan. Maybe it's winter. So I got to, you know, make some money. Uh, so I'm really, really excited for that. Now, here are the three saving tips I knew I, I am going to focus on this fall. Number one, I'm going to track my expenses to the dollar or to the dime or to the cent, whatever you call it. I'm going to track my expenses from money uh, I spend with for my food to money I spend um for uh, for the snacks or buying the SS. Uh, those kinds of expenses are the most prevalent in my life right now. I still don't have a car, so I need to track my expenses. So food is the biggest one. If I get food on the, if I get food and those kinds of expenses really track, I, and I track them down and I really get to know what my expenses are for the week, then I get really get to know how much I'm spending during the week and how much uh, it's going to cost for me. Um, now, number two, don't buy things I really don't need. Now, I have so many n new things that are popping up in my life. Like I, I'm going to be in the volleyball team or I'm, I'm trying out for the volleyball, the pro volleyball team in Providence. So I, I really thought about I already have shoes. Now, I, I might need knee pads. So am I going to get knee pads? Do I really need them? You know, when you're getting something new, when you're getting something for yourself, 
you really need to ask yourself, do I really need them? Or do I really need it? And if you don't need it, don't buy it. Okay. Number three, buy meals and essentials in advance for the best price. Now, this means that I want to prepare my meals at my house because um, because the weather is going to get better. I want to stay at my house a little bit more often. Now, buying meals was the way um, buying meals in advance was the way I was able to save a lot of money or spend less money. Um, when I was right before the summer, when I first started to live by myself, I was able to buy beans, chicken breast, and those kinds of amazing meals where I was able to cook by myself. And by cooking by yourself, uh, cooking it by yourself, it saves a lot of money. You know, if you, every, if you go out every day, like I've been doing during the summer, um, then it's going to tally up to a lot. You know, I, I've been, this month, I've been spending a lot more money than previous months, like a lot, lot money. So these three things track my expenses. Don't buy things I really don't need. And number three, buy meals and essentials in advance for the best price. These are the three saving tips I'm going to focus on this fall. Now you guys should try to, you know, improve your saving, your journey. Um, also, uh, during this time, I'm really going to focus on making money and try to find uh, streams of income I can make. Mm -hmm. So this was this week's episode of Danny's Money. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week with the Lord. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye. And thank you so much, Daniel Baker over there in Korea for another wonderful episode of Danny's Money. And this kind of, I like this episode because it talks about the reality of him in his mission, the things he needs to buy, snacks for the kids and everything else, and thinking about how is he going to budget for himself. And I do think this is a lot of like problems and stuff that uh, we all go through as we are taking care of people and managing them and helping them out in certain ways too. So very grateful and thankful. Guys, make sure you leave and drop a comment below for Daniel. I'm sure that he'd be really, really appreciate that also all right so there it is guys that is the end of today's thursday podcast hope you guys really enjoyed it more than anything else have an amazing and awesome thursday and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the morning star drive on 117.8 it's the morning star drive 117.8 you saw me up with sky and now's the time don't delay i'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly so let's realign just listen and fill your mind i'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me 